Greetings, everybody. My name is Tita Von Koth. This is Angelo and uh, Jalen Baker. Angelo, a.k.a. Jello Vibe, sorry. <laughs> um, we are the faculty of Modern Marimba's uh, Summer Music Festival that happened this week. Um, all three of us taught uh, a wide variety of uh, ages of kids from, I think they're, the youngest one's like 12 to 17, 18. And so we had master classes throughout the week, and we're going to perform for you guys today. Um, and I'm first up, so I'm going to get, get to it. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody. That piece um, was a piece called Remember Marimba by Erilyn Wallen. Uh, she's a composer born in Belize, and she's out in the UK doing her thing, uh, writing percussion concerti for the BBC proms. Um, and this solo is part of a collection of solos in a book uh, uh, collected by uh, Nancy Zeltzman. So it's the Intermediate Masterworks from Marimba. So that's where you can find that uh, solo. And that was kind of an, a shorter arrangement of that. So, All right. So up next is Angelo Outlaw. He's going to do his thing. All right. Can you hear me yet? What's so, up? I'm Angelo Outlaw Jr. You can call me Jello Vibes or Jello. Um, today I'm going to be performing on the Ballad Station. All of this is just original music um, and a bunch of sample editing and splicing. Um, so, yeah, thank you for listening.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Hope you liked it. <laughs> All right, uh, next we have Mr. Jalen Baker, all the way from Houston. Hello, everybody. Make sure the live sound is decent too. It's not too loud, is it? We good? Cool. Great. So I'm, I'm Jalen. Uh, I play jazz vibraphone, and uh, we'll hop right into it. This is uh, "It's Behind" by Billy Shrey.
Thank you guys. Woo! Oh so good. How you guys doing tonight? Great. That was some awesome playing. You as well. Your flow is so good. Oh <laughs> Thank you. It looks like you're moving in water like constantly. So. Seriously? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the Q and A portion of our evening. Um, I was hoping you guys could talk a little bit about your background, especially um, what not everything, but like generally what you were doing, like in middle school and high school, uh, music-wise, and kind of your path since that was uh, the age group that we taught this week. So, um, Jello, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll kind of start. Um, okay. I guess I'll start with middle school. It's crazy. I haven't thought about middle school in so long. <laughs> um, but when I was in musical uh, in middle school, I was super into musicals, and I was in all of the musicals, trying to sing. I don't really have a good singing voice, but I was definitely trying. I was in a couple of like the um, the pits, the people that like make the music of the musicals, or the other musicians in there that aren't just the singers. Um, for the people that don't know what that's called, that's called like an orchestra pit or like a musical pit. Um, so I was super into that. Um, my parents grew me up on like R&B and hip hop. Um, I was very fortunate to, you know, live in Philadelphia and just have a lot of that culture around me. Um, in high school was when I more started exper experimenting with like more of like harder rock and like metal and like the whole indie genre. Um, so I was really in my younger years keeping my, my mind just open musically um, and really just, just kind of going through a lot of different genres, seeing what is the weirdest music that I can find that I would like, you know what I mean? Like what's the weirdest thing out there that my ears like? Um, so I think that that is a huge um, aspect of being a younger musician is really just seeing what sounds are out there, period, um, and seeing what you like and what you like really don't like. And then that's when I feel like you can really craft in what you want to do musically um, or what part of music you want to, you know, what part, of, what aspect of music you want to be a part of. Um, I was in, you know, high school band, uh, marching band. Um, I was also a middle school marching band. I did indoor drum line. Um, I'm, I'm looking over the uh, the questions you gave us. Um, my early mentors definitely shaped my entire music path. I would say that my music teachers were the biggest influence in my entire life. Um, my mother is a is a musician as well. She plays violin, so um, that sort of figure was kind of always there for me musically. Um, someone with that ear, someone just with that like musical drive. Um, but my teachers in school definitely shaped my entire life. When I went to high school, my band director and my marching band instructor had me auditioning for drum corps that they knew I wouldn't make, but I would um, get experience playing next to players that are in like college ensembles and like college studios. Um, so yeah, uh, my early music mentors exposed me to so much and it's super important um, to just take any advantage you can get to just play with more people, especially at a young age when you're building these fundamental tendencies, especially. Um, uh, yeah, so that's also going into advice to young musicians. Um, play as much as possible. Once auditions start up again, um, in the marching activity and in marching band and things like that. Audition for different things. Um, I said on my, um, on my first Q&A that I uh, originally wanted to play cymbals and I auditioned for cymbals because they just were the coolest to me. And then I just like found um, keyboards, you know, but I wouldn't have found keyboard percussion if I wasn't interested in cymbals first, mm -hmm. you know, so what you may be into now or what you want to, want to audition in now may not be what you end up with, but getting that process started and just auditioning and playing with more people really will just expand you um, musically. Um, I'm looking at your questions again. What kind of music uh, are we learning? Yeah, so I was performing, you know, musicals. And then when I got into high school, I really just performed um, 
like marimba literature. I used to practice a lot of marimba literature um, after school and really finding things like kind of in my, uh, you know, ability range, but like slightly harder. Um, or I would find something that's definitely in my ability range and play it super slow or then play it super fast, you know, and really just expanding um, my, like what your ability is right now through all tempos. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really uh, this style of music that I was playing, you know, in high school. Um, and again, that came from my instructors and mentors that told me to do that. It really just kind of shaped um, my hands. But now I'm kind of performing the music you just kind of heard, um, just kind of like experimental vibraphone, um, like lo-fi, just way out there experimental. And again, that's just me listening to a lot of music and figuring out what's the weirdest music that I like, you know? Um, but uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions or if I should go over anything else. Oh, um, um, someone does have a question actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone said, um, well, this is for both of you guys. So Jalen, when you get a chance to talk about your composition, uh, compositional approach and arranging. Cool. Yeah. Um, that is a very interesting question for me right now because the mallet station is so new. Um, and as far as like putting it on like, um, sheet music, I, you know, I am just like still figuring that out. Um, but when we're talking about, you know, writing music in Sibelius in finale, I used to just write like front ensemble scores um, and or like ensemble tunes, especially for Mystique. And I would, um, you know, I usually would just write like one marimba, one vibe and just figure out what I want, you know, maybe just the first section to sound like. And then I would just build off of that. Um, when you're dealing with like scores and things, um, octaves is a huge um, focus when you're uh, writing music for like front ensembles. Um, as far as like writing a solo, um, it's really hard for me to end solos. You know, I find myself really um, slamming it out in the beginning. Um, and it usually comes from a jam of some sort. So I usually just like jam around for a second and usually it's like themed around something and then eventually I'll just like land on something. Um, it's very hard for me to just kind of like look at a piece of music and then just like write something. Um, I usually have to play it first for sure. Um, with the mallet station, it's uh, more like I'll pick a beat um, and then I'll just find a sound and just build off of that but it usually always starts with the drums cool when i'm talking about the mouse station yep. yeah nice thank you so much all right jalen um can you talk a little bit about you know your middle school high school days what you were doing and what you were listening to yeah yeah so middle school i was i was really lucky and really fortunate uh, both my middle school and high school um were really big performing arts students so our middle school band director was incredibly demanding um, and that was good that's good for any middle school if that's like that's, that's your worst phase as a human being in my opinion and um so he makes you grow up he made us grow up really quickly and he kind of demanded excellence or as close to perfection as one could get yeah and he played he played percussion so he oh hey Jalen really sorry to interrupt you can you talk can you speak louder I think some people are having a oh. hard time hearing you I got you. Yeah. What about now? That's good. There we go. I have to crank the mic up. A little bit. Um, yeah, so um, like I was saying, so my middle school band director was a percussionist and he was very, he was um, very demanding and that kind of shaped my work ethic, I guess. You don't want to, when someone is requiring so much of you and he's a little, a little mean, you don't want to let him down. So um, I got really into playing classical percussion in middle school and a lot of drum sets. So around that time, I was listening to, I wasn't listening to very much classical music, if any at all, but I was listening to a ton of like Earth, Wind, and Fire things that my mom likes, the OJs. I was getting brainwashed, didn't know it, but that's great music to be force fed. And um, playing drums along with it and also doing a lot of keyboard stuff. Didn't really think much of it at the time. And then 
I was able to get into the Performing Arts High School here in Houston, so HSPDA. And, and from there, I kind of, my freshman, sophomore year, I really wanted to play in an orchestra. I wanted to play uh, uh, more classical based music. And I guess after about two years, that got a little old for me or it wasn't really what I was feeling in my heart. I was telling the kids yesterday that um, I would often get in trouble with be playing a piece um, in percussion ensemble, maybe a box intervention or something. And I'd get in trouble for changing notes, knowing what notes to play and just purposely not playing those because I thought I was hearing something better. Don't recompose Bach, not something we should do. Um, but that's just kind of where my mind was at. I was- I Now was I kind of want to hear what your uh, arrangements are, you know? If, you know, uh, uh, at that time, I guarantee you nothing I was playing was worth listening to, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that, that was just kind of where I was at uh, ambition wise. And I eventually kind of, uh, got into the playing vibraphone in the jazz setting. Like I had already been playing drum set, so I was very familiar with the genre. And I have an uncle who is an um, incredible jazz saxophonist. Um, so I was around the music, but I had never tried to do it on vibes. And after I heard Stefan Harris, I was like, oh, I didn't really know that these instruments had that 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 type of like depth and soul. Uh, so. I started trying to just kind of play along to some of the music I was listening to, a lot of hip hop. Um, a lot of that stuff doesn't have a ton of harmony, so it's easy to kind of jump in and throw your two cents, put some headphones on, and just kind of went from there with that and kind of stepped away from uh, drums and whatnot and just decided to focus on microphone. And I love this instrument, it's a beautiful instrument, more people should play it. <laughs> and, uh, so like my high school days are great. I went to school with a, a lot of my really close friends are very accomplished jazz musicians already. So I've always been around some incredibly inspiring individuals. So we push each other. They helped me a lot. And getting to when you're young and a sponge and you're around people who are playing like they're 40 and they're 16, um, it, it, it really helps you to develop too. And it makes you want to makes you want to get better. So I was lucky in, to be in that environment at that time. And what, what was the question I was supposed to answer? Uh, oh, there, I mean, there were some ideas, just kind of like, uh, you kind of talked um, about what kind of music you're listening to, your, men, your mentors, um, any advice to young musicians, kind of. Oh yeah. The, you want to um, say anything else? Music, yeah, yeah, the young musician thing. I just say, be, be curious. I think I've been able to get as far as I am uh, just by um, being curious and seeking things out uh, um, with jazz or really any music. But I guess in my experience with jazz, it's, it's really good to go backwards and figure out who was doing things before the people that you enjoy were doing them. And, you know, if you find that just with any genre of music, if there's a hip hop record, like look at the liner notes, people probably don't do that ever anymore because nobody buys physical use, uh, physical CDs, but uh, Google it, find out who were, the, who, were, who were the producers on the album, find out who was the, the songwriters, and that leads you to more, to like more music, you know, um, for me, people like Herbie Hancock, I didn't realize, he's an incredible jazz pianist for anyone who doesn't know, um, I didn't realize how much other things he worked on until I started seeing his name pop up on like people's hip hop tracks or music with, like Shaka Khan. Then you start seeing how everyone is connected and whatnot. And it just exposes you to more music and opens your ears up. You always want to, you don't always have to be searching for inspiration, but you want to, you want your ears to be open. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. No, that was <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess I should talk about myself a little bit. I'm not really that excited about doing that, <laughs> but um, I come excited. from a I come from a very different different background. So um, I grew up in Florida, and um, in middle school, I my my band director uh, was really into musical theater, and he actually left my eighth grade year to go on tour um, with a musical, and uh, he was really inspiring because 
he, he was like that person that could, I thought at the time, like he could do it all, you know, and now he's an arts administrator. So he's really, it's like, he's trying to do as much as he can in music. Um, but he introduced me to some of the percussionists in the Florida orchestra. And um, I just really took to them and I love learning about the orchestral repertoire. And so I would go to a lot of orchestra concerts and in high school that led to me, don't do this kids, but I would skip school and go hear like a matinee, you know? And I, I know that's like <laughs> super nerdy, but that's what I did because those concerts were, they're called the coffee concerts. They would play all this really amazing repertoire for percussion, like um, Rimsky, Korsakoff, Scheherazade, um, uh, Respighi, Pines, Fountains of Rome, like in the middle of the day. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I don't, I love Beethoven, but like, there's not a lot of percussion on it. So there's only percussion in the Ninth Symphony. So, you know, I wanna hear a lot of percussion. So I started studying with uh, those guys and they really got me into youth symphony. Um, I got to play a lot of percussion ensemble music. And uh, from there, I just went to like all these really cool summer programs, uh, Interlochen, uh, Tanglewood uh, High School, had a high school program. So I, and um, I went to the Brevard Music Festival. Tim Adams was timpanist there uh, for that yeah, festival at the time. Yeah, and wow. <laughs> yeah, he was a huge influence on me, especially as I was going to take, you know, college auditions and stuff like that. So I just like really dove in with the percussion stuff and 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 got into like rudimental drumming um, and slowly but surely stopped playing marimba like once college auditions were through because the orchestral thing is like it's intense. So um, that's kind of what was my path. And uh the kind of music I was listening to was like a lot of R&B. We didn't have cable growing up, but we had, we got MTV too. So I listened, I was like watching videos uh, like on that channel all the time. And we listened to the radio a lot. So my mom was like listening to like Delilah. So, so I would listen to like Whitney Houston, all that kind of stuff. So um, that was like what I would listen to like in my free time just because it was like relaxing. So. Um, yeah, that's that was my path uh, up until college. So. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's really dope. So I guess we could take some questions. Uh, from I think I saw somebody ask Jello, do you ever get frustrated learning um, some of the technological sides of things ever? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, I absolutely do. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it is very, very frustrating um, learning, you know, uh, dolls and like logic and garage band and, you know, they're, they're also different um, and have different features and, you know, because it is so endless, like especially the mallet station is just so endless. It makes it hard to, for one, learn everything. Um, and two, just like know what all of my options are. And with more options come more, you know, you know, technical difficulties for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that it, it really has been a struggle for me, to be honest. There is a lot of YouTube videos up. Um, and a lot of what I've recently just found out is that there is, you know, a position in the in the music world where someone can just master your music. So essentially you can just send them a bunch of your, like you can make a song and it can be super out of balance and super like loud and like not ready. And then you can send it to this person and then they'll just mix it for you. Um, and they're a master mixer. And I honestly like kind of knew that was a thing but didn't really know that was a thing now that I'm making my own music um so that has taken a lot of the technical stress out of my life but yeah just figuring everything out with the mallet station and um it it, it can definitely be frustrating just to like make sound you know rather if you just have like a acoustic instrument you can just walk up and hit it you know like this one right here you know but yeah Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, somebody asked, let me put it back on gallery view. Somebody asked, are you three set up to play a little music together for us? <laughs> 
I wish. I wish too. Yeah. Everything to be very out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Nancy, I know Nancy, we can't do that um, over the internet yet. Someone's got, someone out there has to figure it out. You know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's ready yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> But as years. as soon as it's safe, it would be awesome if the three of us got together and, and played played at least on a concert. Yeah, 100 yeah, percent It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Okay. So I don't really see any any, any other questions. Um do you I, guys have um, any? Yeah, I think um since we've been talking about just like exploring music, I just wanted to know like what type of music or artists are you guys listening to right now? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like to create some new playlists. Jalen. <laughs> cool. um, Maybe old people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right now, it's, I don't know. I haven't listened to a ton of music right now. Uh, I just read Tad Mix, but today um i was listening to one of my favorite pianists gerald clayton has a new album out and it's a lot it's a live album so i really like live albums i've tried very hard to find people uh rappers uh singers whatever i've tried to find live albums that do good. so gerald clayton i forget is live at the village vanguard and, okay cool um, and roddy rich has a really good album hip-hop artists i really like his music um and other than that, those are probably the two things that I've been listening to the most currently. Cool. Yeah. Um, for me, let's see. Uh, last night, I watched a live stream of this uh, electronic band called um, Sun Squabby, electroacoustic band. They're actually called like a hydroelectric funk band. They're great. Uh, yes. You know them? I do know Sun Squabby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My partner, Dean, his uh, son is the drummer. Wow. Yeah, but uh, he actually was on vacation, so he subbed it out. So they had a key, a, a different drummer and a keyboardist last night. The live stream, so we watched that, and that was that was awesome. It was a, it was a cool vibe. Um, but I mean, other than that, I mean, this week's just been so crazy. Like I'm just trying to do, right. make sure everything's working and everything. So you did a good in- job too. Thanks. Yes, you did an amazing job. Yeah. Thanks. This was um, great. yeah. Yeah, but like like I was listening to you uh angelo Thanks. just and then jalen like but i you know just trying to study and like just get a sense of uh your guys is playing and, and just it's just awesome to listen to it, it's so cool uh, that i got to listen to you and then here we are talking right, and playing yeah. and I, teaching I, it's cool so fortunate yeah yeah, yeah. What, what about you um i have been nonstop listening to the hamilton album that is yeah. like everything for me right now i think that is like groundbreaking for musical theater you know i said previous i'm a huge musical theater kid i love musicals and i think that's one of the best um but as far as like uh, i found this new artist called uh liana lahavis um like l-i-a-n-n-e space l-a space h-a-v-a-s i think she's a bass player and a singer um And she, Liana Lahavas, yeah, she is really, really amazing. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of like into that with quarantine. My playlists are stale, so <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to Sun Squad in a while though, so I'm gonna definitely throw. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've also been getting into into Twitch. Like my friend of mine got me into that, so I've been listening to some DJs and stuff. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like the program Twitch. Yeah. Oh, okay. The apps. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have some questions here. Um, uh, Tita with me, with such an extensive orchestral background, what led you to playing more marimba and mallet percussion? Good question. Um, I play a lot of triangle for money with orchestras and um, you know, it, if, if you don't do other things, it can get really stale. Um, And you know, I was looking back and I was telling you guys I played marimba in high school and stuff like that. I was like, I really miss playing marimba. I should just start playing again. So I just did. And then I realized there's this whole world that's been evolving since like I stopped yeah. playing and I'm just fascinated with ev- with it, with everything and just how everybody around the world who plays marimba is so cool. So like inviting well, most people, I, I assume, you know, so, yeah. so it's just been, it's been, it's been a, such a fun adventure 
you know, get back into it and just learning a lot. So that's, that's kind of my thing. And then, um, there's another question. How hard is it today with no live music employment for, for everybody? Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that really sucks right now. Um, yeah, luckily I am, uh, I, my other, you know, the other side of my brain is technology, like working in like software testing. Um, oh, cool. so, yeah. So luckily I am working remotely, um, as a software tester right now. Um, but yeah, I, I had a, like my biggest gig like ever set up to play like three days before quarantine, I was opening up for Roy Ayers and oh my gosh yeah, it, I was opening up for four years it was gonna be like the show of my life obviously and oh. uh we got quarantined uh literally three days before that show um, I'm so sorry yeah it's postponed but like until when you know <laughs> right um, so yeah it's not been fun <laughs> yeah it hasn't yeah, what about you Jalen it's not great I mean, I'm been lucky i actually have a gig on sunday probably not probably not a great thing but i am playing nonetheless it's outdoors so that's nice. good i guess but um uh it's, it's been hard i was playing a lot before everything kind of blew up like uh two to four times a week and to be honest i was always like man i wish i had more time to practice so i guess i got what i wish for <laughs> yeah it was it was forced upon me so you know I try to be positive about it just a great time to kind of step back and refocus a little and not uh, I feel like musicians were always like go 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 mm -hmm. um, on to the next thing uh, and you know sometimes it's kind of hard to to rail yourself in and maybe like maybe figure out at least for me figure out why I it is when you can't, when the thing that you love most is stripped away, you, you appreciate it a little bit more, a lot more. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to when it, when things ramp back up, even if it's like the spring. <laughs> yeah, think, for sure. Yeah, uh, At least outside. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. you know, could be, I'm not gonna say it could be worse. I'm gonna knock on wood and knock my phone down. But, um, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but getting to practice every day is a terrible thing. Yeah. For me, the last concert I played was um, the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra with uh, Keith Lockhart conducting, but it was in Sarasota and we were actually in Bradenton. And it's a funny story. So the last time the orchestra played that piece, the, something happened as well. Like, I think it was like a fire alarm or something like that during one of the concerts. So, <laughs> so like, now I guess it's like a, there's like a curse with this piece, you know, that um, something always happens during that. But I've been lucky, you know, I, I live a pretty blessed life and um, the orchestras I work for actually paid us throughout for the rest of the season. That's incredible. Well, yeah. They should, right? Yeah, they should. Yeah. And they got I think they got the PPP loan or whatever. Sick. So, yeah, it, it worked out. But I, I agree with you, Jalen, like it's 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 cool to kind of take a step back, you know, and um, just really enjoy every day and like, you know, enjoy what you do and, and, and remember why you, you do it. Like you said yesterday to the kids, it, it should always be fun, you know? Yep, yep. Yeah. So, so uh, any last thoughts before we sign off tonight? Uh, no, I hope quarantine's over soon so we can all hang out for real. Yeah, me too. <laughs> It's been an honor and a pleasure. <laughs> I was actually supposed to be in Philly uh, like in a couple weeks, but obviously. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Enough, also, so. if any of you ever come to Philly, obviously hit me up. That's yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I actually <laughs> went to Temple. I think I told you. Oh, yeah. really? You went to my little cousin goes to Temple right now. That's why we're going up there. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> North Philly. <laughs> Oh, Jalen, I wanted to tell you a story. So the night that uh, Dean went to go hear you in, in Miami, he was with his friend and like they got booted. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. I know. <laughs> well, what's funny is that they were, that was his old college buddy that he was going to the show with. So it's just like, and they went to the University of Miami back in the day. So yeah. 
it was just like old times, just kind of, you know, <laughs> getting into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All right. Thank you well, for coming, Dean, if you're still, if you're still watching. <laughs> All right. So I, I don't see any questions. So we're going to sign off. Uh, thank you guys so much for this whole week. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I hope you guys stay safe. I'll keep following you guys on Instagram and everything. But follow these guys. Um, they're awesome. Everybody have a good night. Stay safe. And maybe you guys can head over to the Joel Ross concert. I wonder if it's still going on. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Yeah. All right. See ya. Bye. All right. Bye.